What's up guys? Time for a crazy video. We're gonna do part two of the iPhone series and we're gonna talk through the core hardware. This video is gonna be straight up pretty technical and as I'm writing the script, I already know it's gonna be a little longer. If you're a little rusty on processors, I would recommend watching some of my processor videos again and just coming back. I'm gonna do my best to blow your mind and we're gonna go over some pretty complicated stuff from a 10,000 foot view. Let's do it. This is an integrated circuit. What is an integrated circuit? These are the little black squares that come up in your mind when people say hardware. Little black squares everywhere. Inside every single one of those little black squares is millions of transistors intricately laid out doing really smart things. Integrated circuits come in all shapes, all sizes, and they functionally do really different things. It could be a little timer, it could be just plain old memory, or it could be a fully fledged processor. Inside this little black box, all the transistors are laid out and electricity is flowing through metal in different ways to do really cool things. Really smart hardware engineers design these things and combining various integrated circuits together lets you do even cooler things. All right, enough of that, we're leveling up. This is an SOC, or System on Chip. SOC is a really fancy name, but all it is is a beefed up integrated circuit. The picture I have right here is just a diagram of a really common SOC. Looking at the real thing wouldn't really make any sense. Do you want to look at 1 million transistors and make sense of it? Don't look at the individual parts yet, just take it in and we're going to talk about it. What exactly is an SOC? It's actually pretty simple. An SOC is just a combination of various different components that might have existed on different integrated circuits all inside the same chip. They're pretty complicated, but they're kind of just like the integrated circuits big brother. Inside each SOC, there are a ton of things. There could be multi-core application processors, there could be multi-core graphics processors, there could be different cache memories, and there could be digital signal processors all in the same chip. Everything comes together and it makes a system, or SOC, system on chip. For the rest of the video, I'm gonna be saying the word SOC a lot, so just remember it, all right? The iPhone and probably every single smartphone that you might be using has multiple SOCs. Okay, just look back at this picture right now and just take it in. It's a really general picture. What you see here are potentially different components that might exist inside an SOC. In the middle, at the top, you see the main ARM processor. Remember ARM? ARM is an instruction set. So when I say ARM processor, this is just a very general ARM processor that's implementing that instruction set. Take a look on the right side of the chip. You see a lot of special hardware that interfaces with memory. You can't really fit two gigs of memory inside this chip. That's why they have special hardware components or memory controllers which talk with external memory. There are way too many things to cover inside this one SOC, but it's almost like a mini computer and it's the size of your thumb. From the outside, it's also just a little black square. It's just a little bigger. This is what an SOC looks like in real life. Rule of thumb, the bigger the black square, the more transistors. Okay, done with that and let's level up. This right here is a logic board. I'm gonna be picking the iPhone 5S in this video because it was a really groundbreaking phone in terms of hardware and this is actually the logic board that you'll find inside the 5S. Check out this picture right now. This is literally the hardware backbone of the 5S. The first thing I want you guys to check out is that big red square. That red square is Apple's SOC called the A7 and it was a legendary system on chip. This SOC contains a lot of cool stuff. Dual core processors to run your iOS and also I think quad core GPUs to run all your games. This A7 or SOC is a full system, remember, that red box. So why exactly was the A7 a big deal? The A7 was pretty groundbreaking because it was the first SOC to contain an application processor that was 64-bit. 
this is pretty much what had all Android people sweating. Actually, anybody that wasn't Apple was sweating. This was the first mobile applications processor to implement a 64-bit instruction set. Specifically, the application processor inside the A7 implements an instruction set called ARM V8. For a really long time, up until this point, almost all mobile processors were implementing ARM V7, which was a 32-bit instruction set. So when Apple came out with this A7, it was just a really big step forward for hardware and Apple and the whole mobile industry. If you're a little fuzzy on what ARM is, ARM is a British company which is best known for defining the ARM instruction set. So just Google that later if you have any more questions. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit. This is the floor plan of the A7. This is what it actually looks like. You can see that there are a lot of people in the world that dissect these chips to really figure out what's going on. You can see in this picture, whoever created it, they dissected the A7 and they figured out where the GPUs are, where the cache memory is, how many processors there are. Actually, only Apple would really know where everything is inside this thing. The A7 is rendering iOS and all those GPUs inside are letting you play all those games when you're taking your number two. A is for application, powerful shit. Okay, let's zoom out again and go back to the logic board. We're outside the A7 now. You notice that there are other boxes, right? The A7 isn't the only SOC inside the 5S. Check out the orange box real quick. That's actually a Qualcomm modem that's giving the 5S its LTE. As I said before in part one, there are a lot of different parts inside the 5S not coming from Apple. That orange square is a Qualcomm modem and Apple bought that from Qualcomm to stick it inside their phones to give you really fast internet. The modem is what gives you the signal bars. We're not gonna zoom into the modem. It's really complicated, trust me, and it'll just make us cry. There's only a few things boxed here, but let me assure you that on this logic board, there are a ton of different SOCs and different integrated circuits. It's impossible to go through all of them. Another SOC that I want to mention in this video is called the M7. The M in M7 stands for motion. It's another full SOC and it lives on the logic board inside the iPhone. I actually don't think it's the yellow square. I think it's actually somewhere else. The yellow square is some, some other thing. The M7 does exactly what you think it does. It has compasses, gyroscopes, accelerometers, and tons of sensor things. It gathers a lot of data from you and it's that thing that powers a lot of the fitness applications on your iPhone. You ever wonder what hardware is tracking how many steps you take when you walk throughout the day? It's the M7. Here's an Apple guy presenting the M7 at one of their presentations. It's just a little black square sitting on the logic board watching your every move. Okay, a lot of information just happened so it's time to recap a little bit. We started with integrated circuits, which are very simple circuits doing very particular things coming in all shapes and sizes. If you combine a lot of components together, you get a SOC or system on chip. Many smartphones have multiple SOCs. Apple's signature SOC for the 5S was the A7 and it's already old news. All the different SOCs like the A7, the M7, live on a logic board that's right inside your phone. And remember, beside the SOCs and the modems on the logic board, there's a ton of stuff happening that I didn't cover. You have a lot of other stuff going on inside the phone like the screen, the touch sensor, the camera lens, but this isn't the real hardware. Those are kind of like the peripherals and it's not the real, real hardware. This logic board that we just reviewed, where all the SOCs are sitting on, that's the real hardware. You can see how a lot of different companies contribute their products to make this phone happen. Apple does a lot of it, but not all of it. So this is the hardware inside an iPhone 5S. Crazy? Crazy? Is it, is it crazy? If you're a software guy, always respect the hardware engineers or else your software would run on nothing. If you're a hardware guy, respect the software guys because without that software running on it, the phone would be literally less useful than a brick. 
hardware and software each have a lot of different levels within them. There are so, so, so many different levels and parts of an engineering stack and they all need each other. Whatever level you might be working on, whether you're a hardware engineer or a software engineer, you have to pay respect to people working below you and above you. Everyone's work combined in this huge stack of hardware and software is what enables us to have these crazy phones inside our pocket. All right guys, coming to the end of the video here and we've packed a lot of knowledge into this video. This was the 10,000 foot view of hardware basics inside an iPhone 5S and it's really relevant to any other smartphone. I hope you learned something. I think next time we're gonna start diving into software or maybe a little more hardware, I'm not sure yet. If you like this video or learned something, please like or share it. If you have any questions at all or need further clarification, just drop me a comment and I'll respond. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time, all right? Take it easy.